I'm delighted to be joined now by former Limerick hurler and Electric Ireland uh, Fitzgibbon Cup winner Seamus Hickey as he looks back at NUIG's extra time win over GMIT and previews the rest of the campaign. We know that Carlo IT have to come up against UL next. Annually, over 7,000 students take part in the Electric Ireland GA Higher Education Leagues and Championships. Delighted to have you here with me, Seamus. First off, we'll jump straight into the, the Fitzgibbon Cup. What did you make of NUIG needing extra time against GMIT? Yeah, it's great. It's, I love Fitzgibbon for the fact that it's a real team first competition. It really, really is. Uh, and GMIT gave NUIG bags of it um, last night. It was uh, it was surprising because NUIG have been really strong. They came from ex- mm. like that group. Their group with uh, with Mary I, UCD and UCC was a, an absolutely horrendous group to get picked in the first place. So they've been very, very strong all year. Um, and they've you know they've they've really have some fabulous players all over the field. So you know I was I was surprised, uh, really impressed with the GMIT showing. But uh, ultimately, uh, you know I think NYG deserved their berth in the final. Yeah, and uh, Keen Lynch at times you know he, he's obviously like a man among you know younger men. There I have to say, mm. like he he just stands head and shoulders above the rest. You would have kind of thought that NYG were going to cruise it. I mean I saw them earlier in the season against. Uh, UCD and at times he just stepped up and took over I think it makes him favorite in every game just by having this like two-time hurler of the year yeah but like it's it's a complete it's a, it's a difference maker like, so I was talking previously about previous about teammates that I've had you know Keane is one of the one of the very rare players that comes along that you, you hear of from one you hear whispers of from around 12 under 13 I remember Joe Kenning like in the Tony Forrest uh was cutting sidelines over from from uh, from the sideline, you know? and, and I remember hearing about that. I remember hearing about Richie Power and Richie Hogan, the same round, the kind of same vein. So there's players that come along every now and again that are that are special players, uh, and Keane is one of those. And he can do so many things uh, to influence a game, and he defies physics in in how he gets the ball against gravity into his hand. So it's it, 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 having him is a huge huge benefit. Like and the fact that he went down went went back to do teaching. Uh, and and he's nearly he's qualified this year, so fair play to him. Uh, you know, it's a real plus for NUIG, and, and it gives them a huge chance uh, whenever he's playing. How do you see the other semi final going between UL and Carlo IT? I believe Jerry Kelly's uh, red card hasn't been rescinded, so he'll miss the game. Yeah, it's which, which is actually going to be a loss for them, but it, it, it's they're two very evenly matched teams, and they're two very team focused uh outfits so like dj has has i think for the last five six years i think he's had it carlo really competitive um across the across the competitions uh you know they've they have a real reputation for just you know playing the ball through the lines playing you know team first distribute the ball around and they haven't been short of scores in fairness which is great this year um you will then again not, a, not a, I was I was told recently that they don't have too many marquee names, but Mark Rogers for me is is a marquee name. I thought he made mm-hmm. I thought he made a real dent in the in the league last year. Um, maybe not as good a summer as he had hoped, but you know that was probably the same for everybody in Clare. And you know I, I reckon that he, this year's his form in this competition has probably been one of the best uh, across the across the teams that have been playing in it. So he's been playing terrifically well. Brian O'Grady's been very good in midfield. For UL, uh, you know, and he's kind of getting opportunities. Uh, you can see with the Limerick setup, um, you know, Garod, Garod O'Connell for from the Tipperary, he's been fabulous for him at centre forward. So you know, he, they've they they do have plenty. They do have plenty of, of of good players. But again, it is it it is this it is the 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 quality uh, from from two to to fifteen, and then even in goals, they've they a they've a really nice outfit. Yeah, both teams have good forwards. Chris Nolan, Marty Cavanagh, assuming he's yeah. okay. On, on Marty Cavanagh has team. been really excellent this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and last year, I felt in the league last year for Kilkenny, Cavanagh was one of the real highlights for me. I, I thought he was able to make a lot out of very limited possessions, even at the time, and, and he was really forced to be reckoned with. So it's it's great to see him again on this stage shining again because you know it, it's it's a competition like the Fitzgibbon that gives. Gives lads, you know, that, that aren't fully established on the inter-county scene. It gives them a, a real platform to to show their wares uh, and to show their abilities, and to take on a leadership a leadership kind of role that they don't necessarily get with the with the senior squad for for a couple of years. Yeah. So just to talk about Limerick then, and I, I was even just thinking about how much the game has evolved in the last couple of years. So you you retired at the end of the twenty eighteen season. Delighted to have the All Ireland in the back pocket, no doubt. But even since then, how much do you think the game has changed and evolved? Because, God, it's it, it feels like you can attack from anywhere now, and even a cornerback has to be like Barry Nash. We often see you have to be a playmaker too. Yeah, no, it, it's in fairness that was it, it has been it had been coming 
Um, I would say the like the likes of the Jackie Tyrrells uh, early on, I would say towards the end of the thousands and the early, I suppose, teens. You know, you had real good ball playing and Paul Murphy, really good ball playing cornerbacks. That uh, and then you think of uh, Murphy's from Cork as well, like so in cornerback. You know, it's there's been there has been excellent ball playing cornerbacks and across the field. It's just a the expectation uh, on Intersound County Hurling now is that you use the ball when you have it. And there's no there's no opportunity anymore to to lump the ball. You just can't do it if you're if you're giving away. Like I I think of a player like Paul Agmar, uh over the last fifteen years, where he really took the next step in his game when he started in possession. Winning possession of the ball was always a strength of his. Uh, but he what he really took the next level in was dis- distribution uh, and how he actually played the ball around and not. Not direct to full forward the whole time, short to midfield, picking out half forward and Bonner Maher, picking out Shamey then with a long ball into space and crucifying teams. And and that's the difference. Uh, and I've seen that happen over the last 10, 15 years uh, gradually. But in the last, I suppose, the last couple of years, you, you just see the skill level is really a, a elevated uh, across the board. And that's, that's just, again, uh, a result of excellent coaching you see i think the the coaching in the game has gotten significantly better uh since 2010 uh really focused applied coaching as opposed to a very generic let's rise the ball 10 times and, and you know hit the ball long 20 times you know it there's a real game focused coaching approach that has uh taken taken to the game for the last 10 years i think that's probably yielded uh, a higher skill level across the board and across positions Just try, sorry, I just dropped there for a second, Seamus. Uh, but sorry. when you talk about that applied coaching, um, I'm thinking straight away at sessions with Matthew Kenny, who's obviously top inter county manager at this stage. And you know, yes, if you were doing a drill where you like the aim in the next game is to do cross field ball from let's say the half back line to the far side of the D to cut out the sweeper, you're doing an awful lot of that in the training session, and then mm-hmm. it manifests itself in the game. Can you give an example of something that John Kiley, Paul Kinnerk, or some of the backroom team would have done with ye? And then you saw it coming through in a game. Now I I know it's off the top of the head, but if anything comes to mind, yeah, no, there's plenty of them because again, and it's not even just in the Limerick setup. It was in it was in uh, you know it was in club setups now at this stage uh, where uh, so so game based scenarios is the is the real is the real key. So in with Limerick, I can remember you know, one of the key things that Paul did was really stress you, uh, put you in a situation that was the worst case almost. So for a defender, you normally had two defenders, three attacking, and where is the where is the optimal, you know, covering position for that? So let's say there's only two in the full-back line, uh, left cornerback goes and attacks, full-back kind of creeps in there to fill in the void that he's after leaving, and then you're looking for support to come from the half-back line back to cover, but they're chasing from a disadvantage. So that's a game-based scenario where if the decision to leave by the cornerback isn't made early and the cover provided by the full-back and the, the halfback, then that all falls apart, and then you've 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 two men bearing down on your goalie, and it's and it, you're you're really you're, you're you're conceding there. So that's that's one of them, and and he's he was run them aggressively, uh, so that so that you were stressed at a really high intensity, um, and a really high pace. You're expected to get contact with physicality, even though you're at a numbers disadvantage. Because if you get contact, you can break the flow of the, of the attack. So like th- that's just one kind of scenario there. Um, you know, and, and other scenarios then you're talking about like getting getting ball, getting ball to hand in a group. Uh so like you know, you're talking about bad conditions, you're talking about trying to get the the roll lift instead of the jab lift in bad weather, you know, this kind of thing where you're trying to slow it down a little bit more uh to to gain possession in the first instance. What you do with what you do with position then possession then, you know, this this kind of as this idea of putting your arm over the defender's shoulders and leveraging off, pushing forward. Mm-hmm. They're all they're all very small coaching details, uh, and how and how different coaches have coached the tackle over the last few years. Uh, these are all minute, like really detail oriented uh, things that I wouldn't have I wouldn't have seen uh, in, in in the earlier days. So uh, I feel that has made a huge difference. Yeah, to me, they're all marginal gains, and like that could be the difference between you bursting out of a tackle versus getting held up because you know referees see that you're trying to min- windmill your way out. If you have the arms mm-hmm. up and, and you can see that the uh, the body's been held, he'll give the free. Um, yeah. Another thing I wanted to ask you, I, I don't know if I give an example with, with Tipperary. They're obviously trying to 
to some degree mimic what Limerick are doing in terms of working the ball out the field. And, you know, it was a pretty poor game with Kilkenny the other day. It was a turgid old affair, but at times Tipperary are showing flashes. So when you look at Limerick, who are obviously the number one team at working the ball out from defence, like you often see stick passes from the 21 to midfield, they give it to the runner coming through and then a few passes around and delivered into Galan, etc. So if you, I don't know if you saw Tipperary in the last couple of games, but what what's the difference between what the likes of Tipperary are trying to do versus like the prototype, which is Limerick? It's repetition uh, is actually the difference. Uh, it, it's it's doing it ad nauseum until until it's muscle memory and uh, and and the skill level the skill level rises to the to the to the application. So um, you see Cork last year in the league and their emphasis on running ball in hand and maintaining possession to you know at least the the midfield half forward and then run at pace at the half back line. So you know that didn't look clean at the first I would say three games of the league last year, but everybody knew what they were trying to do. Um, so that's what I see in Tipperary, <clears throat> and it's and it's key for teams that once you're in, when, once you're especially when you're trying to install something that's relatively new, and not even like completely different from what they've experienced before, but just an emphasis on what we expect uh, from you know from ball retention and accuracy uh, of ball to hand, you know that's that's a process and it has to be a committed process and what's good what, what good managers do is um you know a bad game that has had 10 balls go to ground and turnovers resulting in scores that we say listen this is part of the process don't panic we're going to do this again and again until we get comfortable with it and i think that's what cork did well last year was and you know the likes of donald o'grady in the background there is, is key there he's like listen don't listen to the voices that are outside here we're doing this you know, we're, we're, we're doing short puckouts to our cornerbacks and we're expecting them to run out. We're, we're doing this uh, short stick pass between half back and midfield. Uh, you know, don't don't listen to the to, to the boos of the crowd because I, I remember a good one from 2011 uh, when Donald Brady was with us and he encouraged playing the ball back to the goalie. Mm. Uh, you know, so he encouraged using the goalie as an extra an extra defender. And uh, like nobody's marking the goalie, uh, and you've got a, a kind of a pressure valve release there. Uh, but as soon as I remember a day in Ennis against Clare in the league, uh, we played the ball back to Brian Murray, and it was just you'd swear we'd we'd uh, we'd, we'd we'd put the ball over our own bar. It, it's just the, the the crowd were not au fait with it. They didn't they didn't like it. But you have to tune that out and say no, no, this is actually part of our plan. And I think that's I think that's kind of part of the, the temporary journey this year is we're going to play this game. Uh, we're going to be patient with it, and it's it might not look great in the early stages, but we're going to get better at it, and it's going to it's going to pay us dividends in the, when the ground dries up. Yeah, certainly, I, I did get that sort of um, that tone when I was in Semple Stadium the other day. People are kind of down with it; they understand where it's going. But like a few times, it broke down. And in terms of going back to the goalie, Cahill Barrett put one out for a sixty-five, and could have put it in his own net when he was trying to play it back to Brian Hogan. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask you about the water breaks, though, because? Um, just from playing matches in the last few years, I've kind of found it very handy in terms of like saying to whoever's playing with me, this is the way we need to set up now. And you have that minute where you can calmly explain it rather than your blood is up while you're playing and you're just screaming at a lad to do it, but you don't really get the method across. And then being involved with a team recently and trying to, it's very hard to change things mid-flow without that break. So do you buy into the idea that, you know, it, it might be a bit of a loss for Limerick this year because... You feel like there's great minds on the sideline there. Can work with his, uh with the tactics board and stuff. So, what's your thoughts on that? I don't know if it's going to be a, a negative for Limerick specifically, insofar mm. as because the, the, the flow of every game is going to be different now. Because um, I know from playing club games that it was survive five minutes, uh, like they're in a purple patch, but that purple patch has a whistle coming in five minutes. Don't worry about it. We we'll, we we get to five minutes, contain the damage, and then even even if we said nothing in the water break. Um, just regrouping and, and clearing the minds and, and taking a breather was normally broke the other team's momentum. So you're going to have the flow of games is completely different. So I don't know if it's going to be specific to one team. Yeah, it's, it, Limerick definitely, uh, you could see Canuck bringing on the, the, the board with the, the magnetic pieces and shifting them around and seeing who's doing what. And, and, and even puck outs, Shawnee O'Donnell will be feeding down information about puck outs in real time to, to, the, to the water breaks. But every team is doing that. 
to different degrees of effectiveness. I get that, but like the, the reality is the water breaks came in, they actually took a bit of adjusting. Uh, teams get used to how to actually use them strategically. Now they're gone. You just have to basically, uh, it, you know, the strategic use of communication and uh, the effective use of communication, you, you're just going to have to redo it. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, a, as, as drastic as, as all that, but uh, I know in the club game, I, it was, it was, I liked it. Um, yeah. It just, it did, it did kind of uh, give you very uh, finite, bite-sized pieces that you could focus on, and everybody was focused. And then, you know, if we needed to refocus, well, then there was a word or a or, or, or a change. Uh, but at the at the end of the day, um, I, I don't think people were complaining that it wasn't there before. So I, I think we'll, we'll we'll readjust. Absolutely. Well, look, I wish we had more time to talk plenty more hurling because there's so many things we could touch on. But that's Seamus Hickey. Really appreciate you joining me, and uh, hopefully we'll chat again in the future. Okay, so that's Seamus Hickey there. We've got the, the full live show coming at uh, 1pm. All the Thursday shows are now at patreon.com forward slash our game. So join us for that.